you had a little trouble interpreting the answer, but I, you got the right answer, so that's good. You, uh, you got the right answer. Um, but notice we can't do this unless we know a plane mirror has an infinite focal length. So that was an important idea that we went over. Uh, uh, a beginning student might stare at this and say, gee, this isn't fair. They didn't tell me the focal length. Well, they did when they told us it was a plane mirror. All right. Uh, now, uh, what's the answer to the question then? Uh, well, uh, it should be um, focused for five meters. Good, good. So a lot of people would say 2.5. This is where it's important to keep labeling our diagram. So how long is this distance that I've indicated here on the board? It's uh, 2.5. But where would your camera be? Well, your camera would be here, <coughs> where you are. Your camera would be here. So the distance between your camera and the image would be this distance. This is what they were really asking us for. So actually, it turned out that this wasn't quite right. The question was not asking for the image distance. That was really just the sub-question. The real question was this distance. The real question is this distance over here. Uh, well, that's 2.5 plus 2.5. So I think you said the answer was 5 meters, and that's right. And now this is just a geometrical length, so we would want just a positive number for this. Our camera should be uh, focused at 5 meters away. Okay, this is a good example of how um, people oftentimes use the wrong lengths on these problems. You can't just assume that the number that pops out of your equation is what the question was asking you for. It would be so easy to say the answer is 2.5, but they're really asking us for the two things together, which is 5 meters. So that's an important step. So it's important to really, so um, you did a good job of starting your uh, diagram there, but maybe you didn't put as many details in as you could. We want to put as many details as we can into our pictures here. All right, now something else um, that you mentioned in your, uh, in your email is that, uh, again, there's going to be ray tracing. So we want to go over the ray tracing for each of these pictures as well. That's difficult, so we'll just go through that together. So uh, let me erase the algebra that we've done here so far. But you should take a look at, uh, is it page two of the handout that has the ray tracing points? Mm -hmm. So now we're ready to do some ray tracing. Like I said, this is difficult. This takes practice. All we're trying to do here is give you a model that hopefully you can go home and drill on. So. Let's go through this together. Um, so we'll start with the P ray. So the first thing we have to do is draw the incoming portion of the P ray. And we'll follow along with that in the handout as well. Now, um, where is the incoming light in this diagram, the left or the right? The left. Yeah. When we say incoming, we mean coming into the mirror. Well, it's coming into the mirror from the object. And remember, how do we draw the P ray? It's parallel to the axis. Yeah, so we have to draw this axis. Notice a good way to draw an object is with the bottom on the axis. That's usually a good way. So I'm going to draw this P ray coming in, and I'm going to draw it up to the mirror. So that's the incoming ray. Remember that the incoming rays always are bouncing off the object and coming towards the mirror. Again, if we were going to be realistic, we would show that first it comes in from an outside source, and then it hits the object and bounces off. But we don't really care about this reflection. So we can just focus on what the light looks like after it reflects off the object and starts moving towards the mirror. Now we have to say, um, what side is the outgoing light going to be on? What side will the outgoing light be on? The uh, left side as well. Because it's a mirror. We know that the mirror the lights all stays on the same side. Now, remember, according to the handout, through where is the outgoing light of the P ray supposed to go? According to the handout, through where is the outgoing light supposed to go? Through what point? Through the focal point, mm -hmm. or in line with the focal point. But if you think about it, remember, where is the focal point for a plane mirror? which means that this is never going to get there. All right, and uh, maybe it's intuitive or maybe it's not, though, that it means that that means this is just going to bounce straight back. It's not going to bother bending because the focal point is way out at infinity. If the focal point was here, 
it would go like this. If the focal point was here, it would go like this. If the focal point was here, it would go like this. Well, since the focal point is at infinity, uh, notice that these keep getting shallower and shallower. Well, if the focal point was at infinity, it would be perfectly horizontal. So the outgoing ray will look like this. Um, now, of course, in reality, the outgoing ray would go back along the same exact line that it came in on. But I just drew it a little bit above so that we can see both of them. But it would really come back along the same line that it came in on. So this is our, out, this is our ingoing and our outgoing P rays over here. Okay, so uh, this is a little bit different from, than from a curved mirror, so we have to get some practice with this. All right, and the other way we like to draw is the M ray. Um, now, uh, the, uh, first of all, we do the incoming M ray. Well, do you remember to what point do we draw the incoming M ray? The center. Yeah, M is for middle. So let's try to draw that to the middle. Okay, and we know the outgoing light will still be on the left. Now, I don't know if we really did an M ray for a mirror before, but at what angle should it bounce off the mirror? At what angle should the M ray bounce same, off the same angle that it comes in at? Yeah, so we have that in the handout here. It should come and be reflected from the middle of the mirror at the same angle as it came in. If this was a lens, it would just go straight through at the same angle it came in. So for a mirror to go out, it's kind of hard to make sure that the angle is the same. You gotta do the best you can to make the outgoing angle the same as the incoming angle. So here's our outgoing M ray. Remember that the M ray has nothing to do with the focal point. It just goes into and out of the middle. All right, now we have to figure out where the image is. Well, remember at the bottom of that table in the handout, the image is either where the outgoing light rays or their trace backs converge. Well, are these outgoing light rays going to converge or do we have to trace them back? We're going to have to trace them back. Yeah, these are never going to converge, so we have to trace them back. But here's what I mean by a trace back. I'll take this outgoing P ray and I'll trace it back behind the mirror with a dashed line. And then I'm going to take the outgoing M ray and trace it back behind the mirror. And wherever they intersect, I'm going to draw an arrow for the new image. Okay. All right, that is how you do the ray tracing for a uh, plane mirror. All right. Um, now, it just takes practice, so hopefully you'll go back and do this again a couple times. Now, is the image object uh, supposed to be larger than the, uh, uh, or the image arrow supposed to be larger than the object arrow? It should really be the same height. Okay. It's just because I drew these slightly askew. So that's maybe all. I should really trace this back over here. I just wanted to make sure. Yeah, that's an important point. I drew this ray a little bit above just so I could have room for them both. But this, this trace back should be, all of these should be really at the same height. All these rays should be at the same height. I can think this is kind of intuitive that this is how a plane mirror would work. If, if something comes smack dab perpendicular into the mirror, it goes out perpendicular to the direction it came in, because the mirror's not going to bend it. So this is supposed to be the same height as this arrow. It's still not coming out of the same height, and I'm a bad drawer. But these really are supposed to be the same size. Okay. I'll actually make a note of it. This was supposed to be the same size as the object, and it would be if I were a better drawer. These two arrows should be the same. Okay. All right, so that's our uh, ray tracing here for the plane mirror. Uh, sometimes people draw an F focal, uh, F ray, but we're not going to worry about that for the plane mirror, so we won't even worry about the F ray here. You only need two rays anyway, so usually the P and the M are the best. Notice that we now have confirmed, is this a real or a virtual image? Because we needed the trace backs. Remember, if you need trace backs to form the image, it's a virtual image. That's what we already figured out from the math, but now we figured out here as well. I uh, notice that we can't really use our lens mirror chart for a plane mirror. Lens, this, does, this applies to curved mirrors, so we have to figure out plane mirrors separately. This chart won't work for us uh, over here. But this confirms that the image is over here. And by the way, um, I, I think you can see that just by looking at it, this distance here looks about the same as this distance. Isn't that what we figured out when we did the algebra? When we did the algebra, we figured out that the object distance was 2.5. And we figured out that the image distance was also 2.5. <laughs> mm -hmm. Well, I think you can see that basically came out here. And again, if I had a straight edge and I was a better drawer, these would have come out to be the same exact distance. 
Uh, you can see why that is, because this is the same ray as this one, and this is the same angle as this one. So it makes sense that they should intersect at the same angle, at the same distance behind the mirror as this object in front of the mirror. 